Hello and a very warm welcome to this tutorial series about the Hive synthesizer or Hive 2 synthesizer from UE in version 2.1. In the third episode, this episode, I'm talking about the filter and the routing, but let's get started. Okay, so this is the Hive 2 synthesizer and in this tutorial I talk about this area here, the filter area with filter 1 and filter 2 and the audio routing. So and for that I initialize the patch with clicking on the display and now everything is resetted and I hear something like that. A pure sawtooth. So um, the filter like the oscillators are divided in two that is mirrored on the other side here and the, um, there are some little difference two difference mainly um, the one is with the oscillators that you can click on this uh, link button and with this link button everything fo fo everything follows this um, parameters and you can offset this parameters with um, turning the knobs on that side so you can change a little bit but at the end if you just put that um, on the same level you just use those knobs and maybe adjust a little bit on this side this is the link button and another thing I already explained a little bit in the oscillator tutorial about the filters because um, when you want to hear something from the synthesizer you have to switch it on with the filter so the audio routing is oscillator goes through filter and everything that comes out of the filter will be heard so if I play here and disable the oscillator here in these um, activation fields you hear nothing as soon as I activate it again. So this is um, the most important thing to know about oscillators and filters <laughs> in Hive because if you don't activate that you won't hear any sound. Okay so um, let's go with this because you can activate oscillator 1 here, you can activate a sub oscillator 1 from here then you can oscillate uh, <laughs> then you can oscillate to the other side and activate oscillator 2 and sub 2 okay and on the other side on the filter 2 you have another options um, that is filter 1 because you can um, route this filter through this filter so everything that comes out of this filter will be in that filter and we'll get uh, um, an output and um, this is uh, this is a little bit sophisticated but very easy at the end because every filter has its own volume output uh, here and if you sw um, switch down or turn down the volume knob this filter doesn't uh, create any sound only the whole sound after getting through this filter is getting in this filter and is getting here out so you can choose if you filter sound twice and only hear one result or you can say okay i um, want to have the output of filter one the output of filter two plus the output of filter one as well so uh, your output um, on filter two is uh, a mixture of filter one and two this is very important to know if you use this routing with the filter one. And the other options here in this audio routing tab is oscillator one. You can root oscillator one here, sub oscillator, oscillator two, sub um, oscillator two here. And you can do it here as well. So you can cross, um, uh, maybe not, not uh, a cross mix, <laughs> but you can, um, work on on each oscillator with two filters okay so there are many um, audio routing options and um, to start from here again you had already the volume button 
This filter you can uh, solo. So if you're working uh, on a sound or something with two filters, you can solo this filter so you can work more focus on, on this filter. On the left side on this filter, you have uh, this uh, arrow down where you can click on it. And with this option, you can copy the settings of this filter and paste it, for example, on, on that filter, on filter two. And you can save your settings. You can save the settings file in your um, file explorer. You can init filter one, init filter two. Um, you have your different presets. And if you save some more presets, you have even more presets there. So nice, nice opportunity to think about some filter presets. If you uh, use a filter preset more often, you can save it there. Okay, then let's go uh, maybe in a zoomed in version of the whole thing. Okay, so here you have an input volume knob. You can turn to um, gain the volume of the input signal to the filter. So maybe you create some more harmonics with it, or you can lower it down if it's if the uh, if the signal is too hot or you do some uh, resonances, very extreme resonances, where you have to have a, a low input to increase the effect, for example. Double click on the knobs, turns it back to the uh, to default. Another important thing is when you work with these filters, um, the synth engine option in the middle here uh, does create uh, different results if you choose clean, normal, or dirty. You will um, see that or just if you load a, a preset, just try out clean, normal, and dirty. This gives you slightly different um, sound results. Then you have the uh, mod envelope and the mod envelope is mod one here. If one is chosen here or two, then it uses the mod envelope on the other side, this one. And the same is on this filter here, where you can choose one or two, mod envelope one or two. Okay. So I choose here one. Then the LFO is this LFO, LFO one. And you see the same LFO one and LFO two. The same goes with, um, oops, <laughs> with this LFO. So you can choose if this LFO is um, working on this filter, for example. Then you have a key follow, and a key follow is something really simple and uh, but has a big effect on your filter. So if you choose, for example, you have a cutoff um, on here, for example, and a resonance on here, and you play a sound, it sounds like this, maybe some more resonance. And you go up in pitch, for example, the filter stays if the key follow isn't uh, on a higher value than zero. If you put it on 100%, for example, the filter move, moves with your pitch. So you can see middle C, and if I go up in pitch, if I go higher, so the filter is always perfect in sync with your pitch. That uh, has a big in influence or impact, uh, for example, for the comp filters, or every filter at least. So you have, a, you have a more constant filtering result if you want that. If not, just choose a different value or just switch it off. Then I already talked about the volume. Couldn't decide if if uh, uh, keep the key follow on or off, but I keep it off at the moment. So the volume is just the output volume. And as well, the cutoff frequency where you can move the filter around and the resonance where you um, emphasize, emphasize the, um, the point from the cutoff frequency emphasizes or just um, attenuate it if possible. Okay, let's come to the um, filter section itself. And um, there are different filters. If you left click 
on here. You can choose bypass so the filter is doing nothing. Just a pure, in this example, sawtooth comes through. Then um, you have a, a low pass filter with a 24 dB slope of four pole, four pole slope. So f um, four times six dB. I think you know you know them all, just playing with cutoff resonance, for example. And for example, to use the triangle uh, uh, LFO, maybe turn down the rate. I use it to different time base, like quarter notes. I use a different something like that. Then there is a low pass filter that uh, cuts off high frequency with 12 or two, two pole. S similar with a little different sound. If you compare it, you always can use the mouse wheel to scroll between parameters up and down. Okay, and then we have a band pass filter that cuts off the low and the high frequency and, and in the middle you have a, like, you hear the frequencies, like a um, high pass and low pass filter and you can move this band pass, or maybe I switch off the LFO. And you can use the resonance filter as well to emphasize this point. It's always uh, important that you try out the different filters if you don't, if you are not so familiar with it, so you learn to hear uh, what effect they do. Then you have a high pass filter, the opposite of a low pass filter, where you can um, cut off the low frequencies as well with the resonance. For example, that hurts my ears a little bit. Then you have a band reject, and the band reject is. Um, let me have a look. The band reject is the is described as the opposite of the band pass filter. So you have something like a little notch in there, and when you turn the resonance filter, the notch goes deeper until a specific point in the middle and then jumps back up again and gives something like a, a steep bell filter maybe or <laughs> inverted notch. I don't know what this steep filters are called. Normally I think bell filter but this is very steep. So you can use it like this. example. Then after the band reject filter you have a peaking filter and the peaking filter is described like a bypass with a little peak and you see the little peak in here and you can increase this peak a little bit with the resonance filter and now you have and you can choose this filter effect. Then there are three different comp filters, the comp filter itself, the dissonant and the reverb filter. And um, these filters um, change the view or have a different interface like this. It looks a little bit like a mixer, but um, they're a little bit different. The comp filter is at the end um, uh, a short delay. And um, with this with this filter, you can surely mix in the original sound and mix in the comp filter. For example, maybe the resonance down a little bit. And this filter is uh, feedbacking at itself and to uh, control the feedback, you can use the damp filter. You heard it when I put the resonance um, high here. So if I uh, damp it down, so I reduce the feedback of this sound. 
I open it. So, so um, a short uh, copy of the same sound is um, feedback to this filter. So this is a little delay. With the ratio, the ratio, um, if you put it t from zero to 50%, it puts another delay, another comp filter in it. Don't. And the sound changes slightly. And over 50% um, uh, the manual describes that uh, both delays are uh, extended a little bit in time. And with these comp filters, maybe I have to add a latch so I can hold the sound even if it hurts a little bit. Okay. And maybe... Uh, that's good, so I can switch it off. If I hold it now... Okay, I can switch it off, that's important. Um, maybe I put down the volume a little bit. Um, with these, uh, comp filter uh, especially is that you can, uh, that you should use the cutoff um, filter and all um, parameters here very um, softly or in very small steps. And to, oops, and to use it in very small steps, hold down the shift key and then turn. And you see in the display that it changes values, but um, the decimal values. And if I um, release the shift key and just do it like that, it moves um, quicker. So if I press now a key and move it like this, this Um, but there, there are a lot of sounds in between really uh, fine-tuned um, parameter settings. So sometimes you have to sweep really slow the, through those parameter settings to find the sound. And with the comp filter now the key follow gets a little bit more important because... Because if it doesn't follow the pitch, it will change the result. Um, um, sometimes very drastically and if you put that the keys follow on it you have this result on one pitch and this will continue on another pitch so this is very important especially for comp filters because the, um, the results are sometimes really completely different and uh, for sure you can use um, the LFO to change the cutoff a little bit Maybe I put that a little bit so it just moves and I play a note. Move it even more. like an alien uh, shouting or crying or something. So this is one of the comp filters. Then there's another one, a dissonant. And the dissonant um, filter is something that is described with a, a frequency shifter. Yeah, is it a frequency shifter? Wait, no, this is not the frequency shifter. I'm sorry, just forget that. <laughs> 
Um, so this dissonant um, filter is as well a com filter. So let's get started with maybe something like here. I don't know. And the mix here. So you have the sawtooth. That sounds like that with the ratio. Nothing happens. The dissonant is a little bit, uh, it's described like a, a four and four feedback delay network. So with the comp filter, you have two delays. If you um, switch up the ratio to 50% and with this one, you have four delays, four feedback delays. Um, the damp um, filters the, the feedback path like a low pass filter. So you filter out high frequency if you use the resonance filter, for example. And the ratio is lengthened the delay times. This is some, sometimes very subtle, the difference, but um, you can hear it. Especially when you move and you can move it um, with a, for example, with this um, LFO or with the, let's use the, the LFO. Ah, uh, no, this is moving the cutoff filter, but I could use the LFO to move the ratio here. And, and just let it move a little bit. This gives a lot uh, of like metallic sounds and uh, you could use this as well for some percussion um, instruments. So let's delete the modulation as well. Uh, again, <laughs> not as well. Put the resonance back, the volume, maybe, uh, I don't know. Okay, and the next filter is as well a comp filter like uh, reverb. Uh, it's called reverb and just turn everything down and the reverb has even longer delays and uh, resonant resonating and you hear this like reverb um, roomy effect if you um, raise the mix volume I'm sorry, the roomy effect was from the LFO because I didn't see that it's still active. So the normal sound would be like that. Still roomy. But now you can hear a little bit the, um, the delay. Put in some more release. Sounds more like a delay or a reverb. And with LFO, there could be very, very um, slow movings where you can really um, 
create some nice ambient spaces, maybe like um, alien sci-fi, um, uh, metallic things. Or if you use another uh, filter, additionally, you can just put it like behind doors or something. Could be very interesting. And the last um, filter is a sideband filter. And the sideband filter is um, descri described as a special kind of amplitude um, modulation. So let's get, put everything down, the resonance down. This is very interesting. Let's put the key follow down for a moment. And um, this sideband uses um, a frequency shifter with the ratio um, signal. And now I try something with... Um, and put maybe um, no resonance. I use for example another like a pulse or square for example and then play a note again Okay, <laughs> this sometimes really um, some, 
for other people very annoying but here's the same with the other uh with the other three or not the other but the three um com filters you have to search for the sound and maybe just uh, use for example the sub as well so so you can um use the key follow as well and something that is as well very um nice and sometimes very interesting if you use a wavetable and um, use for example where is it dx piano then a loop and maybe slow loop where you have changing waveforms and use those changing waveforms to put that through that filter get the same maybe use a higher octave a little bit LFO here so this changes a little bit and just imagine what you can do if you put if you put a reverb on that or delay or something you can do that maybe like a delay 2 or so Maybe some more LFO, just in small step with the shift button pressed and then move, click with the mouse and move. See, now it gets very fast. Everything is more beautiful with a delay and a reverb. <laughs> Put a reverb here as well. Just a simple reverb without nothing. Just standard. And there's your ambient space. You can play with the tempo here. Make it even more slow.
you could uh, use the table feature and scan through these tables as well then you get a little bit different sounds play a little bit with the resonance for example And if this if this is too much on movement, just reset the LFO, just search a different spot, for example. Or maybe get back here and detune for example the sub oscillator or maybe just a little bit like this one or detune it wait where is it semitones now here is the detune Detune it here, put some unison on it. Negative. So, ah, wait, <laughs> I'm, on the, I'm on the wrong device, so it doesn't stop. So now it stops. So in this, with this, you can um, just search for sounds, for ambient spaces, for the, like some talking weird alien stuff. This is really interesting and um, depends on the sounds you choose and how you root it and, and stuff. And sometimes there are always the, the little movements that make a big difference. Not like, yeah, put it here, put it there and so on. Just use the a shift um, key and search for the small and hidden features of, a, of the frequency spectrum. And uh, you will find sometimes really surprising uh, things. And uh, take a look at the manual. There are some tips and tricks. Um, it's a really good manual. <laughs> I appreciate such good manuals. I would love if uh, other products would have such a manual as well. And uh, yeah, I hope you liked it. I hope it was not boring to hear these uh, long sounds and searching and sweeping through the uh, frequency spectrum with the cutoff frequency and the resonance and the LFOs and stuff. I hope you liked it. If you like it, uh, leave a thumb here, subscribe to the channel. If you don't have, leave a comment. I would love to hear from you because feedback is always really nice to hear if you like it. And if you like it, then share the videos would help me as well. And um, yeah, I hope I see you soon again in the next video. So stay healthy and see you soon. Ciao, ciao.